Yeah, it's actually like at the end of their lifespan, they spit up blood and that's the most expensive one. That's actually just, you're literally buying bloody spit. But it's I like someone hawks a loogie that has lung cancer. Hey Lowen, this is Loudy6 here with another video and we are back in a very familiar location. We haven't really filmed here since we had our baby, right? Yeah. Who is uh, scurrying around right below us right now. Hopefully we can knock out this video before she goes crazy. Sorry, babe. My Sorry, baby. Sorry, baby. But anyway, uh, today we're going to talk about the most expensive foods that you can find in China. And the funny thing is, is most foreigners that come here are automatically surprised at the low cost of everything, especially the food, right? So. I can go get a meal for one to two dollars, go get a nice dinner, I don't have to pay more than 10 bucks. So a lot of foreigners come here and automatically assume, wow, China is not a very rich country, everything is so cheap and I can eat really cheaply, right? Now the issue is that China is kind of a dichotomy because not only is it the cheapest place to eat, but it's also the most expensive place in the whole world. And this kind of boils down to the fact that business meetings, important occasions, um, food being consumed for its medicinal value rather than just for nourishment, right? All of these factors kind of play into the fact that uh, food can actually be really, really expensive here, right? So let's go over some of the stuff and we're actually going to talk about the foods that we've tried that have been really expensive. Of course, we did not pay for them. Yep. We cannot afford this kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But we have been in situations where they are being offered, right? Mm -hmm. And the first thing I want to bring up was actually uh, bird's nest soup. <laughs> First, as a canto, I love a I. Canto? What's a canto? <laughs> a Cantonese girl. It's actually made of like bird, uh, bird spit. The most expensive one called Xue Yan, which is the bird spit too much, they have blood in. It. Yeah, it's actually like at the end of their lifespan, they spit up blood, and that's the most expensive one. That's actually just you're literally buying bloody spit. But it's like someone hawks a loogie that has lung cancer. Actually, according to all my friends and parents and whatever everyone told me, it's like they got enough protein for you and college for you, collagen, collagen for you, and uh, you. make you look pretty glowing. So you don't need Botox; you can just eat bird's nest. Yes. This actually goes for about fifteen thousand RMB per kilogram. So. Obviously, you're very light, right? Well, for me, obviously, I don't believe in the medicinal values of eating bird spit. So for me, it's not worth it. I will say this, it's not disgusting. It actually just doesn't taste like very much. It actually, tastes like, I'll say it tastes like nothing. Kind of like right now, what I want you to do out there, Lao Winners, is swish your mouth around. We all have spit, right? Don't make it so disgusting. No, I'm not. Swish not. your mouth around and your spit will taste exactly the same. You're just eating a bowl of spit. No. Oh, that's not how it works. It actually tastes pretty good. Oh, because you add sugar to it. You can add sugar to anything. If you get a chance to uh, eat it not on your own bill, I'd say give it a shot. It's not, it's not great, but it's interesting. <laughs> now the next one actually we're gonna mix two together. Number one is uh, shark fins, right? Mm -hmm. Which has a really kind of negative connotation, especially abroad where a lot of places have banned it because the Chinese fishermen tend to cut off the shark fins and then toss the live shark back into the water where it slowly dies, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously there's some animal ethics there and babies handing us balls. <laughs> Obviously there's some animal ethics there that you know people need to pay attention to. Uh, that being said, it is a very, very popular dish here, especially in the south mm -hmm. of China, and it is very expensive with prices at about 20,000 RMB per kilogram. First I wanna ask you, why do you eat them? It's the same like <laughs> bird's nest. It's all about the collagen, isn't it? It's always about the collagen and about the women's skin skin quality, right? And you look pretty from inside out. I don't I don't think it worked for me. Now, what I'll say about shark fin, it tastes okay because sometimes they use a little bit of the shark meat in the soup, which I found to be quite nice. It's kind of like a stringy fish, but it's not that fishy. Mm -hmm. I actually thought it was pretty good. I mean, I wouldn't pay that much for it. Uh, some kind of cuisine, they also put uh, some snake meat in it. Yeah, that's and right. And chicken meat in it. That's what I have. And make it a stew, and then you put some like red vinegar in it. Cool. Number two, uh, the sea cucumber, also incredibly expensive. Uh, I think it was about 20,000 RMB per kilogram for, for a good one. 
It's one of those things, you think about a sea cucumber, I mean a sea cucumber literally throws up its own guts as a defense mechanism for other animals not to eat it. So to me as humans, I feel like we're smarter than the fish that are actually scared off, but apparently not <laughs> because we eat sea cucumbers here in China. And I gotta say this, they taste disgusting. Absolutely the fishiest, most disgusting thing I've ever had in my life. Yeah, it's on my top five foods of like things I won't eat. Something not, I don't like. It actually tastes sour. It's rough and sandy on the outside and the inside's like jello, but if it tastes like potently like rotten fish, yeah. not worth it. To, to us. Right. <laughs> The next one is probably the most interesting, and it's something I see on menus everywhere in China right now, and that's cordyceps. Cordyceps is this weird, bizarre freak of nature thing where a worm will get infected by a fungus, and it's kind of like a horror movie because the mushroom will grow out of the worm's body. It actually tastes really good. It's an uh, infected zombie worm you're eating. <laughs> How can that taste good? I've had it, I've had it, it before. It actually tastes good. I remember when I was a kid, my mom usually cooked the soup. Right. My, <laughs> my mom would scare me that said like, if you eat it, you will have a lot of hair grow on your mustache or like your arm and stuff. <laughs> Like because it's too strong, right. so you have to leave it for your daddy. <laughs> right. So. I, no joke, your mom, you know what she said to me before you got pregnant? Well, she was trying to feed me this stuff, and she was like offended that I didn't want to eat it, right? Speak of the devil, little things over here. Guess what happened? The worm worked. <laughs> now, jokes aside, she was bragging to me about, not bragging, but she was kind of like, I spent uh, like a thousand dollars on a tiny little bag of this stuff so that you could have a kid, because she thought, for some reason that we couldn't have kids just because we hadn't planned on it at that point. Because yeah! in her mind, baby, no. She's here. Mwah. Go get it. Now these zombie worms are really, really scary looking, but I'm not even joking. A kilogram of these things, estimated kilogram of these things is over a hundred thousand US dollars. The next one is actually, how to say, it's a little bit controversial because the Chinese government actually just banned uh, the hunting and sale of this animal. However, us being in Guangdong, I'll be honest with you, maybe you know the rest of the country follows suit when the government makes a law, but we are the last province to usually follow that kind of stuff. It's pangolins. And if you don't know what pangolins are, they're kind of like a armadillo, and they have a really hard shell in the back. Why in the hell would you eat an arm armadillo or a pangolin? When I looked it up, it said like the blood can heal lots of respiratory problems and all this kind of stuff. It's also like eating tiger and right. uh, what's it called, the bear's palm. It seems like in China, at least in Guangdong, the rarer the animal and more endangered it is, the more benefit to your body it is, right? So I've also heard the theory in, in Chinese medicine, especially in Cantonese medicine, that if you eat something, it will benefit that part, right? So a tiger penis will benefit a man's penis. And that's that uh, means sick ye, ye. Means like the same. So if I eat a pangolin, can I grow a badass shell? Because no, that's cool. You like be bulletproof at that point. Yeah, sure. Awesome. That, a pangolin around these parts at current estimate right now is about 60,000 RMB. So it's about $10,000 for one animal. Uh, I forgot to ask you, I've never had it before. Is it worth it? You've had it. I know you have. I know you have. I heard someone tell me that it tastes pretty much like a mice meat, mouse meat, or a rabbit meat. Oh, okay. I guess that would make sense. Did you eat rats? The next one is something I have every single year, and that's a hairy crab. It sounds a little bit weird. It looks really gross. It's this crab covered in hair. It looks like it's infected with something that makes it grow beard like facial hair all over its body. It's pretty gross, but I will say this. Once you get over it and you find someone that's able to get it from Hangzhou, Shanghai, like the Jiangsu and Zhejiang area, I, I just got chills. I just got chills. It is quite possibly, I'm gonna say top 10 things I've ever put in my mouth, the most delicious things ever. Like it is unbelievably delicious. Around here, you can only like get like this big. Yeah, it's already cost like a uh, hundred dollar for one or two like right. this big. In Hangzhou, you can get like this big. I remember just, your like, cousin's priceless. wife brought some down because she's from Hangzhou. Yeah. Oh, oh my man. god, that's amazing. Now the reason it's so good is actually it comes with this row, 
and it's this, it's not like normal fish eggs or crab eggs. It's really really gooey and slimy. Mm -hmm. You can't taste the eggs. Mm -hmm. It's this red kind of rich, fatty, delicious thing. It has like a the sweetness of a crab in the row, mm -hmm. and then you uh, put some vinegar in it, right? Mm -hmm. And then you slurp it out. Do you know nowadays it's so rare and so good that like each crab have their birth certificate? Yeah, they give the birth certificate with it. Yes, I you can that. check about let have chips and stuff. Right. Like you can <laughs> just because they people actually like glue hair onto them to try to make them. Not kind of only good. that, nowadays like people inject stuff in it. Right, right. Recently we just saw some like video saying like they in order to make it heavier and stuff they right. inject a. Water and all that kind of stuff. Not only water, they plastic. plastic. They inject plastic in it. Again, one of those really sad facts about China is a lot of the food is counterfeit, especially this expensive food. When profit margins are that high, it makes sense, right? <laughs> uh, last thing, and the main event that we actually want to talk about was something that I had the other day, and it was my first time having this really, really special dish that I actually think has a lot of significance here in China. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned in the beginning that certain dishes or certain food or certain alcohol is used for face giving measures mm -hmm. uh, to show someone that you care about them. So you go to an expensive restaurant, you drink expensive booze, right? Mm -hmm. And also like basically when your you know, friends get together after a long time apart, right? And they kind of want to show you a good time in their hometown, give a good impression of their hometown, right? I was in Xiaoguan the other day with Prazi on a road trip and the last thing that we did was get together and eat pen cai. And that's basically this huge pot with layer upon layer upon layer of really, really rare food, right? Mm -hmm. And I gotta say, it was really the, quite the experience because there was a bunch of people around the table and it's supposed to be this kind of, it's supposed to, they told me, it symbolizes unity, everyone coming together, right? Yeah. So they were kind of introducing the dishes, uh, all the foods inside and everything, and they told me it's a Cantonese food and it's really, really special and it has a lot of special significance. Now, before we get into what's actually inside of it, what, what is the story behind this? Uh, back into the Southern Song Dynasty, and there is some really famous general in order to like run away from the whole uh, dynasty changing. So they actually got forced to run away to the Yue area, which is Kanto area. Right. So because they are really famous and they being kind to the locals. So local, in order to feed him and all, all the soldiers, they wrap up everything like pork and uh, uh, tofu and uh, everything they valuable and to in order to cook for them. But mm. they don't have enough pot, right. so they back then they only have those like wood pot to wash feet and take shower and stuff. Oh. So uh, they can use that. To feed all the soldiers. To feed all the soldiers because they're big. That's so they put everything there to cook it, make a fire. So because of that, later on, uh, those people, every single time, if they want to celebrate, they right. want to, like, for example, somebody have a baby, somebody right. move, um, spring festival. Long time no see. But anyway, um, when we got together to eat this, it was actually pretty incredible because what happened was um, I, could, I thought it was endless. There was so many layers of food. There was yeah. crab and meatballs and pork belly. Now this whole occasion with me and my friends that I hadn't seen in a long time, you know, it was really kind of special that we got to meet up and they wanted to show us a good time. And this pensai actually cost 3,000 RMB for one dish. So it's like $500, right? It can't go higher. Not only that, but they <laughs> bought f four bottles of cognac, like Remy Martin. So the whole meal was like almost 10,000 RMB. It was absolutely insane. And that's kind of what happens here in China is there's extremes, right? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of poor people that don't have very much money and there's also a ton of rich people and they absolutely like spending money on things like food and drink. Are you eating the remote, <laughs> baby? That's not good. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Law Winners, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Okay, ready? <laughs> Prezi, you tried to I make her like, freaking drink and look what you made me do. Because before she said if I drink, I would miss my mother. And so I wanted to say it back to her, but she gave this perfectly okay explanation. <laughs> so <I just> <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Of course, of course. Of course. Yeah. When you're happy, you smile. When you're sad, you cry. When you look at me, when you look at me, you drink.